And I say the word a house because this is a house. It's not just a building, a church building or a place where a congregation comes and attends. This is truly a house from day one, from the time that I know you and that I've met both you and Pastor Z. It's always been about sonship. It's always been about sons and daughters. You've never, when anybody, everybody comes through the doors, when they come and meet you for the first time, it's always been my honey, or it's always been my son, that's my daughter. You've always accepted and embraced people from day one. And that's been the power of this house because the kingdom can only be built with sons. It cannot be built any other way. A congregation cannot build and establish the kingdom of God. And that's been your heart from day one. But as much as you have sons and daughters, you can only have sons and daughters if you have parents. And you've adopted us as your own for many of us. I went to go see my... I went to go see my dad this week. But when I got out of the car, I was so happy to see my daddy. And then I realized that God actually showed me what is a daddy. Because my, in my spirit, I was like, yo, I'm going to see my dad now. I'm so excited. And I was like, yo, I never knew this word like I know it now. I never knew dad like I know it today. And it doesn't matter what happened in the past. I can look at you through the eyes of what daddy really is in this world today. And that's been because of my relationship with you. When I came into this house and I saw your relationship with God the Father, I was like, what this man got, I want that thing. I want to know God the way that you know God. I want to serve God the way that you serve God. I want to speak to God the way that you speak to God because you saw him as daddy. And I just when I was thinking this whole thing, I was like, Yo, you know what? Throughout the Old Testament, they had a revelation of God, but they never called him father. They made a reference to him as being a father that will carry but no one ever called him father except when Jesus came to example, set the example of what it must be. He only spoke about father. And then God gives us the Holy Spirit to witness with him as ever. But the challenge sometimes is that because even the distance or the religious cycles and uh, places that we come from, even though we call him daddy, because the perception and the understanding of daddy is incorrect, we even treat God the way we see our own natural parents. And so we struggle even in our relationship in terms of somebody that is so good and can love so much because of our previous and where we come from. And then in my relationship with you, you broke down barriers, you broke down walls, you broke down limitations, you broke down perceptions that I had of what a father should be. And you showed me, you exemplified the heart of God the Father to me in my life. That when I could get out of that car, I was like, show me, I'm going to see my daddy. And it felt so good to say that word even to myself. And I realized even what God had done inside of me because of what I've seen in you, that I can now look at my earthly father and have a joy in my heart to call him daddy. And so I just want to share something this morning, a quick scripture. It's in Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, give me my father, give me the portion of my portion. Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them to his livelihood. Keep going. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all there, there was a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he had come to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his servants, bring out your best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. And for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry, would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. And he, so he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as the son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. And many times when we go through the scripture, we deal with it from the perspective of the prodigal son. But today I want to deal with it from the perspective of the heart of the father. And I just want to lay out some stuff. And this for me, in terms of the heart of the Father, exemplifies you and Pastor Z. Your hearts as parents to the, to the children of this house. Number one is that fathers, parents, they build for sons and not for themselves. He says, all that I have is yours. There's never been a moment where you haven't gone somewhere, done something, and thought about us. There hasn't been a moment where you put your feet on other land and pray for us. There hasn't been a moment where you've done something, experienced something, and never wanted to take us with. You always want to expose us to the best. You always want to take us with you wherever you go. You always want us to be a part of what God is doing in your life because it's always been, it's not just about me and my family. And you've said it before, and I know it, that if it was just about you and your family, you could have shut up shop long time ago and taken care of you. But you prepare to bear the burden of what God has placed on your heart for the family of this house and for the world abroad. And for that we are thankful. Thank you for always thinking about us and never just thinking about yourself. Thank you for, you know, even my business partner, he says, this, he says about you. He was saying that he's not somebody that's after stuff for himself. He's been with other stuff and done some other stuff with other pastors. But he says, I've seen your pastor. You know, Pastor Max? <laughs> He's not somebody that's just in it for himself. And he says, you don't find many people that's like that. You don't find many people that exemplify that in the kingdom of God. And that's from somebody that's sitting outside and watching in. Fathers will always cover. He put a robe on him. There's many times, even when it wasn't your sons, people that have come and said stuff against you, and it would have been so easy for you to take the mic and say, these people actually did A, B, C, D, E. And you still covered those people. Even when we didn't want you to. You chose to cover people and to protect their name even when they came up against your name. Even as sons, when we've made mistakes and when we've fallen and we've, we've come, you've always put the robe back on. You've always put the, you've always come to cover and to love and to say it's going to be okay. We're going to get up and we're going to move on. We're going to get up and we're still going to win. We're going to get up and we're going to do this thing. Don't worry about it, son. There was a day when I thought, man, it was over for me when I got so angry in one fight and I came to you and I said, I almost hit this guy and it, I felt like it was over. And you just said to me, there's mercy. There's mercy, son. And I had to go preach that night and I was still like, okay, I don't know who's going to preach. God is over with me. I made a mistake. And you said to me, you're going to make some mistakes down the road, son. Just repent before the Lord. God's mercy will cover you. Now go and preach the best message you ever preached to the youth. That was your words to me. Because you cover. You're always covering. Fathers assign you authority. The ring was the sign of the authority that he placed upon his son. You're always looking at where's your portion. Whenever anybody comes around you, you're never satisfied with just the, this, like Pastor Michelle said. It's never it's not good enough to be the status quo. It's like, no, 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 where's your portion? What's assigned to you? Whenever you speak, no education mountain is yours. It's never a job or something. Like that. It's always, no, put the sign of authority upon the sun so they can go out and dominate and take over. Wherever you go, God's got to open up doors. When we walk into places now, we walk with that authority. We walk with that state of dominance and that outlook of dominance because of what you planted on the inside of us. You've never ever tried to manipulate. You've never ever tried to keep us under. You've never ever told us to accept the low standard of living that the enemy tried to put us under. You always, no put the ring of authority on. No, that places belong to you. No, these places belong to you. No, these spaces belong to you. you even said to me when you were in New, York, in New York, you said, it's not good enough for me to buy you something from New York. You must have your own son to come here and do your own year. It's not good enough for me to give you something, but it's for you to have have your own to come here and be here in this place. 
fathers will aid you in your walk. He says he put on the shoes. Your walk with God has always been a priority for both you and Pastor Z. You exemplify that full on in this house. When we look at you and we see your desire and your heart for God and how you always want to please the Father. Paul says, in, 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 um, imitate me as I serve you. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. When we look at your lives, you make it easy for us to look at, to build our relationship with God through what you're doing in and through your lives. You've never, ever compromised. You've never chosen to compromise. And everything that you've always done was always to keep us on the path to what God wants for us. The father had both compassion and he had confrontation. He had compassion on his son that fell to align him once again, but he confronted his older son to bring correction, to bring him into alignment again. Your focus has always been to keep us in alignment with God's word, the path that God has got for us, the plan that God has got for our lives. And we appreciate that as this house. I mentioned it last week as we as our minister. I said, you never ever come here with a good word. You come here with God's word. Because your desire is not just to come and tell us something nice. Your purpose and everything that you've done, that you've taught us how to do, is what? Is daddy saying? God, what are you saying for your people, for your sons and your daughters? What are you saying? Because it's the word that's going to give us the victory. And you want to know that word that's going to bless this church. You're always seeking the word that's going to guide us, lead us, and take us to where God wants us to be. And we honor you for that this morning. And then lastly, fathers celebrate the victories of their children. Not once. Have I ever been around you to not celebrate something that has taken place in our lives personally and even in other people's lives? I think Pastor Z is the, the person that can celebrate the most. The littlest thing that you can have a victory on is the biggest thing for Pastor Z. They're always celebrating. And you know, publicly and privately, there's many conversations that I'll have with the pastor where he'll tell me about another congregant member that's winning. This breakthrough came for this person, son. I'm so blessed for these people. I'm so blessed that they've got the victory. Stuff that you haven't even shared publicly, that personally in your heart, when you've seen people win, it's a win for you. And so we want to honor you this morning. We want to take time to appreciate this morning and say thank you for paying the price. Thank you for setting the example that you do. Thank you for showing the world the heart of the Father as God's calling even upon you in this season, as the mandate of a father, not only to this house, but to nations. Our prayer is that God's going to deeply deposit everything that he needs inside of you to do what he's called you to do. There are many, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, if you can just pull up that scripture quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Bum, bum, bum. To the, he says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as, a, as my beloved children, I warn you. He says, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. And there isn't many. And the reason that I believe is that is because a father builds for sons. The vision inside of your heart has never been for you and you alone. It's always been for others, for their victory, for their breakthrough, for them to come into their highest. Your book, your payday is not called my payday because your desire has always been for people to come into their highest. And for that, we want to honor you. We want to appreciate you this morning. You are the best spiritual parents that any church could ever have asked for. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for the sacrifices. Thank you so much for the love. Like I said, you show us what it means to be good parents, to be a good father. I never knew that word to what I know it today. And this week was a revelation to me that I actually know what it is to have a daddy. It was big for me. And so I want to appreciate you. I want to tell you that I love you. I want to tell you that you are amazing. And I'm so, so excited, privileged, and honored to be a part of what God is doing in this house. Amen.